Well, good morning. Uh, it is good to see everyone this morning. Now, last week we started a one, two, or three lesson series on forgiveness and how we handle hard feelings. And, and I appreciate so much feedback from people. Obviously, it's, this may be forgiving or being forgiven is a problem we all share. Is, is that true? Because I just thought it was me. You know, I mean, I figured you people never hold a grudge, but I do. And, and so we, we all need to learn, and I'm just going to do a quick recap. I'm not going to get into, but I want to go over last week's, uh, after we do a reading here in a second, I want to go through the seven steps of, of asking for forgiveness because that's the first thing. But let's start. Brother Sidney, if you would come read, and then we'll get more into our lesson. morning. Our reading this morning is Matthew 18, chapter, verses 21 through 35. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me, and I forgive him till seven times? Jesus said unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king, which would take account of his servant. And when he had began to reckon, one was brought unto him, which owed him ten thousand talents. But, as, but for, as, for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold, and his wife, and children, and all that he had, and payment to be made. The servant therefore fell down and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave him the debt. But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him a hundred pence. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me that thou owest. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. And he would not, but went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very soft and came and told unto their Lord all that was done. Then his Lord, after that, he had called him and said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that thou, all that, all that, 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 because thou desirest me. Should not thou also have compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? And this Lord was wroth and delivered him into the torment until he should pay all that was due unto him. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do unto you, if you from your heart forgive not every one his brother. Their trespasses. Written to your here in Matthew 18, chapter verses 21 to 35. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of His word. I feel like I'm back home when somebody says that at the end of a reading. I miss that. I miss that. My home congregation a number of years ago started that whenever God's word is read, the entire congregation stands of respect for the reading of God's Word. And so I appreciate that respect. Um, so, as we said, we started last week talking about uh, forgiveness, and, and this week's portion, after I do a review here in a second, this week's portion, uh, that scripture is very, very applicable uh, because we're going to talk about granting forgiveness to someone else. Well, we're good about begging for forgiveness, maybe. But it's sometimes it's hard to give it back. So let's do a quick review. Seven steps. First is state your wrong behavior and call it what it is. You're going to take responsibility for what you have done wrong. Until you're willing to confess to you, yourself, your God, your person that you've injured, it does no good. And apologize. Apologize for the pain that you have inflicted, uh, especially when it's a loved one, right? It, it can cut like a knife when it's someone that you care about, someone you love. 
explain what you intend to do next to correct that. You need to have a plan. Uh, I, I will talk to, uh, often to uh, people that have different addictions or whatever, and one comes to mind, I ask that person, I said, what is your plan moving forward to, to stop this, this addiction you have? What do you mean? What kind of plan? I'm just going to stop. Then you're not going to stop. You have to have a plan. You have to change the people you hang out with. You have to change, the, you know, the things that trigger that desire for that addictive agent. And, and, and no, I'll just, I, I've got willpower. Okay, I'll see you in a couple weeks. So, and then ask for that forgiveness. And then accept whatever response you get because just because you're in a place of asking doesn't mean they're in a place of granting it yet. So accept what they say to you and make amends or restitution. If, if you're Southern like me, it means you got to pay for it. Uh, I have had it asked of me before. It says, well, shouldn't, if, if we have a criminal system built on Mosaic law and all that, shouldn't if we become a Christian, we should be forgiven you know, of, of what we did wrong. I said, you still got to pay the penalty of the law because that's what a godly person does. You, you, you pay your penalty, but you're forgiven, you know, from God. Okay, so today we're going to start talking about accepting forgiveness of others. Uh, our relationships include people that can hurt us deeply. Um, spouses, uh, close friends, uh, people can hurt you deeply. And many times they don't mean to. Uh, Alice and I were hurt by someone many years ago. It was a total accident, but they betrayed a confidence, and it, and it hurt terribly. And the thing is, they didn't realize they had done it, but, but we did, and we felt the pain of it. And we, we eventually let it go for the most part because they didn't realize they had done it, but it still hurts, doesn't it? Uh, and many times you can be hurt in small, ongoing ways. Uh, how many of you have started husbands and wives? You, you started the day out, and you were in a bad mood, and you knew the second it started to leave, leave your lips, you should not say that to the other person because you knew it was going to start something. And, but, you, but what do you do? Because you're in a bad mood, you say it anyway. How many times have I done that? And then when you do, boom, they fire back. And it just builds from there. Until finally, no more words are said because you're not speaking the rest of the day, right? So we, we know that this happens to us. Now, very often, we try and just brush these hurts aside because you're good people. And, and you don't want to carry this grudge. But Jesus said there's more to it than that. You can't just brush these aside. There has to be an act, a step of forgiveness. For example, Paul, 70 times, I mean, Peter, 70 times 7, brother. You know, and... Well, you'll, you'll see my apology here in a minute. I, I'm not there yet, I guess. But anyway, the Lord promises that forgiveness is possible. Even when the hurt seems too great, too deep, forgiveness is possible. Um, Alice and I have been working in the foster parent DCFS world for a very long time now. And one of the things that we can learn from children is, no matter how bad the hurt is from the parent, that cause these children to have to lose their home, their family, their friends, their toys. You don't think that's important, but we have learned that that's very important. Their toys. They still love that hurting party. Parent, whatever. They love them intensely, and don't you dare say a word against them. Because now all of a sudden it's you that's bad, not the other person. So... Forgiveness is possible no matter how deep the injury is to us. But sometimes when that, that hurt is deep, we do not like the way God forgives people. Now hear me out. Sometimes, I mean, we all know, we're, we, we, we get into God's word. We know that God says, when you come to me for forgiveness and you're a child of mine, I forgive you absolutely, totally. Wipes it out of the book of life, you know, he, he wipes it away. So on the day of judgment, that sin's not there. It's been covered in the blood of Jesus. We know all those words, right? Those are all those preachy words that I use. You know, you get to heaven, Jesus is your arbitrator, and God says, I don't see the sin. It's gone. But when it's person to person, 
I don't care how many times you say I forgive you. If you hurt me bad enough, that jumps in my face every time I see you. And so we don't like it, and that's because we have a faulty worldview. We have this worldview that supersedes our God view. Now, obviously, what is the intention? To, to grow into a God view of forgiveness. We need to grow into that. But resentment helps me not get taken again, right? I'm more aware of that person, and I'm watching them. Wrong. That's just wrong. Because God is all-knowing, because God is all-merciful, he can, he can reach that point. There has to be a way, since God can do it, for knowing and forgiving to exist together. It has to be. Clear-headed forgiveness doesn't mean you forget because I'm not capable of forgetting. Well, as I get older, I'm forgetting more and more. He's not here. Bruce has got shingles now. Uh, I was with him yesterday. Apparently, he doesn't care if he gives it to me. But anyway, I, I said to him the other night, I said, Bruce, I'm a little worried. You've been getting a little forgetful here lately. And he goes, you're just now noticing? And I said, no, you're forgetting a lot. And he said, oh, I was joking when I said that to you. I said, you are lying now on top of forgetting. We all do that as we get older. But when it comes to hurts, it seems like we can never forget that. We forget the good stuff, but we, we can't forget the bad stuff. So how about the angel in Exodus 23? We'll look at God's viewpoint here for a minute. In Exodus 23, 20 to 21, it says, Behold, I am going to send an angel before you to guard you along the way and to bring you into that place that I've appointed for you. Be attentive to him. Do not be rebellious to him because he will not pardon your rebellion since my name is in him. Now, God says, you listen to him. You obey him because he's mine. You start to mess up, he's not going to forget it. See, the angel's got the same problem we do. And I, let me show you why. Now, there's a video going to pop up. It is about two seconds long, so watch careful. You ready? Okay, so, did you get that? So, let's say, I, I was actually going to break a plate, but my wife advised against it. And I couldn't think of a way to do it safely. And, you know me, I'm a klutz. I'd have cut my, my juggler vein when it broke. And Now, okay, so let's say we got a broken plate. And, and, and we take the plate, we smash the plate, and then instantly regret it because they got no place to put my peanut butter and jelly sandwich now. So I look at the plate and I say, I'm so sorry I broke you. I need you. I need to put my plate on you. Is that plate going to magically come back together again and hold my sandwich? No. See, sometimes when, when something gets broken, you can get forgiveness. You can accept forgiveness. But the damage is already done. And it takes time for the damage to be undone. Even if, if, if I glue that plate together that he just smashed, it's still always going to show all the cracks. It's still going to show them. So how do we handle the hard feelings that come from a plate that's been broken and is covered in cracks? Let's say that they ask for forgiveness, okay? Okay. Let's say that you told them, I hope you meant it, but let's say you told them, I accept, or vice versa, you're the offender. How do we handle the hard feelings that comes with that? First and foremost, you do need to protect yourself from people of the world that are out to hurt you. I will say this especially to our, our young, young kids here today. Be aware of people that hurt you over and over again. There are people in this world that are evil, and they're just evil. And they're out to hurt you. Um, there are people that, uh, kids especially, if you get a bad feeling about an adult that's in your circle, walk away. Trust the instincts that God gave you. But we do have to protect ourselves because there are some people that just hurt us and hurt us and hurt us. But 
I still have to forgive, God said. Well, the key is invite God into the process. It is the Lord who will keep us separated from our resentments if we will, if we will let him. Now, I told you before, I know I'm being repetitive. I'm sorry, you've heard the story. But the person that hurt me um, when I was young, in a very deep way, I held on to it for way too long. I've told you that. I did not start to lose the resentment until I purposely changed from hating to praying that God would accept their forgiveness, whether they said it or not, accept them and bring them into his fold, into his heaven. When I started changing my prayer from, I wish you would die, and yes, even I said that for many years, to God save that person. I was not able to forget the resentment until I made that change. Now, I will not let my children be around that person or my grandchildren. It's not going to happen. But I don't hate them. I do not want them to go to hell. I do not want them to die. I want them to be in God's service. So the resentment is gone. But the wariness is still there. So how do I overcome this worldview that says it's okay to hate? First, be disciplined in your endeavor to forgive. Be disciplined. If it means you need to, to um, put a note in your phone and the phone rings seven times a day and you pray seven times a day to help it go away, then that's, if that's what it takes from you, you do that. Whatever it takes. Um, I'm kind of old school, and I took my psychology classes a very long time ago at this point. But one of the things I tell people, and it still works, it's amazing, but if, if you have a habit you're trying to break, you wear a rubber band around your wrist, and every time you start to do that behavior or find yourself has done it, you pull the rubber band out and pow. Now, it needs to be a tight rubber band because I want it to hurt. And you snap that rubber band. And soon, because we're as dumb as a dog, we start to put pain with action. And so we change our action to alleviate the pain. Pavlov, right? So be disciplined, whatever that means, to change the behavior so that you can get the forgiveness. Get used to naming hurts and putting them away. Um, so, you know... We've invited you to our home today, and, and there's a whole bunch of stuff that's not unpacked yet that I hid. So stay out of my storage rooms in the basement because there are boxes on top of boxes on top. And Allison says, where's this? I don't. It's somewhere down there. We'll get to it by midwinter, I'm sure. You know? But name the hurt and then put it in a storage room. Name the hurt. We need to name the hurt. Y'all remember... Um, not Patty, Carol, that came from the Lutheran home. We all love Carol so much. Well, Carol had um, some, I'm sorry, no, it was Patty. Patty had some issues against her mother who was already dead. And she couldn't put away those. And she was special needs. She had some learning disabilities. So one day, Patty and I sat down in my office and we wrote this letter to her mother in which we named the hurt. Then we drove over to the city cemetery and we read the letter to the mother's grave. The mother is not sitting there listening. I know that. You know that. But it's helping her put that hurt away into a box, so into storage. And it worked. And it will work for you as well. Name the hurt, then put it in storage. And then get the Lord's help in there. Again, okay, so we've asked God to be a part of it. We've made the changes so that we can start the forgiveness process. We have named the hurt, said we're going to put it away now. Because you're human like me and you have trouble with that, start praying for God to help you keep it in its box. Keep it in there, Lord. Don't let me look at, at you know, I started to name people. I name people all the time and just use them. as. I'm not going to do that today because none of you have hurt me that way. George, you said, is anybody named George? Okay. George. Hurt me, and every time I see him at church, I get mad. No, we put that away, and we pray to God about it. So when I see George, I see the potential for a better relationship, a better tomorrow. 
And it has to be done 70 times 7. And, okay, here's my apology. I know my math was wrong last week. Doug and Patty reminded me very quickly after church that I am not a math person. I know it's 490, not 534. I don't know where that came from. Square root of, no. Anyway, so it, God, uh, Jesus did not mean Peter do it exactly 490 times. And 491, you don't have to forgive him anymore. You can shoot him. I don't care. No. God says, forgive him. But Lord, forgive him. But Lord, forgive him. But Lord, you don't know. God, stop talking. You don't know what they did. Forgive them. Your job. Now, here's what's scary. The verses say, your forgiveness in heaven depends on your forgiveness of others here. I hate that verse. Don't you? I, I, I shouldn't hate any of God's words, but I do. Because that means I have to learn to forgive quickly. Because I want the blood of Jesus to continue to forgive me. Now, the reason God said that to us is not because if, if I get to heaven and there was a grudge that I'd even for, kind of forgotten about, but it was still there in the depths of my mind, God's going to say, aha, I saw that one thought, you're going to hell. That's not what, he, that's not what he's saying. But we need to be in a lifestyle of forgiveness. Because if you're not in a lifestyle of forgiveness, you can start to get into a lifestyle of hating, and that hate can grow until you're no longer in a lifestyle of godliness and of trying to live right. Hey, you know, very seldom does somebody who's a faithful, strong, do everything, member of the church, just walk away one day and never come back. It doesn't usually happen that way. It's little changes happen in their life, and they get more and more problems, sins, anger, whatever, until they drift away. And the problem with people that drift away is we don't always notice. Because it was so slow, we, we miss the transition. We start to accept in the back of our mind that they just missed a week or two. And then all of a sudden, it's months and it's years. And somebody will say, where is so-and-so? I don't want to embarrass Brother Sidney, but, but he hadn't been coming here long until one day he said, Brother, where is that person that sits there? And, and where's that person been that sat there? And I went, I was so embarrassed because I hadn't realized. So I'm thankful that he had realized and he was the new brother here. How many of y'all had noticed? I'm not calling names. But how many of you had noticed? See, we, we have to do that. So forgiving, here's the next one. Forgiving when forgiveness has not been asked for or possibly even wanted. Have you ever had that where somebody does something and they don't care whether you forgive them or not? They don't care. I had a person one time try to ruin my career uh, in the military because I, they, were, they were childish and selfish, and I would not give them what they wanted, so they went and they filed a false report about me. And, and it had to be investigated because that's the way the government works. Now, by the way, you know what? It's interesting because the inspector general said, I knew it wasn't possible before I even started because of your lifestyle. I knew what they said could not be true. It's like, well, thank you. But they still had to investigate. That person worked directly under me. They never asked for forgiveness. They never apologized. And they thought that they could demand that it would happen again. And they would report me again if I didn't do what they wanted. Uh, I will tell you this, because of where I worked, they were not the only person in my career but they quickly found themselves in a new job that they didn't like nearly so much. You can call it vindictive. I call it, it was just an army reassignment. And since I made reassignments of senior people, oh well. So, okay, I'm going to tell you a funny side story. There was an army major during, shortly after 9-11 that he wanted some things. I said no. And I was acting commander for the Army Reserve, the night command, and for the entire Army Reserve. And it was a little bit of a busy time as we were mobilizing for war, right? And this guy kept just annoying me to death about what he wanted to do, where he wanted to go. Well, you, heard the old, you, know, you ever heard of Abu Dhabi? He got sent to a place very much like Abu Dhabi. And I don't think he enjoyed the rest of his war. <laughs> anyway, sorry, I was vindictive. But... It was a senior officer assignment. 
we needed someone there of his rank. So forgiveness when forgiveness hadn't been asked for, when it hadn't been wanted. What do you do? Well, first, you go to Romans chapter 12, verse 17, and say, Never repay evil for evil. Never repay evil for evil. I shouldn't have told that story now, should I? Never repay evil for evil. One, you'll have no respect from that person. Two, bad things just seem to bounce back and bite us, don't they? I'm not going to call it karma because I don't believe in karma, but I guess I do believe in the theory of what goes around comes around. So don't repay evil for evil. When you can forgive someone else, there is a freedom from being unshackled from that pain. Now, even if they're still walking around knowing it and still walking around thinking, aha, see, I got him over the barrel, you're, you're free. Let them live with that. You're free of it. You're not shackled by the anger that comes with it. Um, I'm just going to say this. Having been here when many of you were teenagers, uh, having been here when some of you adults were not the adults of the age you're currently at, I'll just leave it there, you know, because we were here in the early 90s, uh, and we're back. For the past 20 years, I have watched many of you grow up. And I know there are those of you that have hurts that are within you that existed when we were here the first time. Now, they may not be crippling. They, they may not even be more than a minor irritant. But I know some of you are still feeling those things. And I know that because I remember those things. They got to go away. Because even if they're a mild irritant, have you ever walked around with like a small, tiny stone or a little piece of wood, guys, when you're working out in the workshop, it gets down in your shoe, but you don't want to take the time to stop and undo your shoes and take it out, and keep, so you just keep doing it because it's not a big deal. But after about an hour, it's a big deal. It hurts. So let it go. It's hard work. You have to work very hard at letting these things go, but you have to do it. And because of that, <clears throat> each time you forgive something, it makes it easier the next time. <coughs> Excuse me. Every time you forgive, it makes it easier to forgive the next person or the next thing or the next time, whatever it is. Again, here's the verse I was talking about, Mark 11. If you don't forgive, God won't forgive you. He's talking about a lifestyle and an attitude of forgiveness there. So, hey, I am going to wrap up this series today. So, some reflections on what when you find yourself unwilling to forgive. Because there are times we just don't want to do it. Oh, all of you nodded yes, all of you said amen, but in the back of some of your heads, I heard it echoing in the hollowness of your head. Sometimes, all of us, including me, just don't, aren't ready to say, I accept your forgiveness. What do you do? First, you consider, does my forgiveness require them to do something first? If it does, it might have become part of your identity not to forgive. That might be who you are becoming. You're holding on to something. And you also need to consider, am I gaining pleasure from this resentment? Now you think, now how can you get pleasure from resentment? Have, have, you, have you ever been having a little something with your spouse? And you're mad at them, but you make them madder at you for a minute, and you go, ha, 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 I did it. Yeah, that, that's finding pleasure in the resentment. And, and that's a little thing, and it usually goes away. But, you know, in our life, we need to consider, am I starting to enjoy being angry all the time? Have you, have you ever seen those people that are just always mad about something? And it's stupid things most of the time. Or the people that are grumpy all the time. Alice and I talk to each other all the time about we don't want to become the grumpy old man and woman, you know, that, that as I, who I don't Fiona said it one time, stay off my yard, you little whippersnapper. <laughs> That's her viewpoint on what a grouchy old person is. Um, we don't want to be that. We don't want to become that. Is there a part of me that wants to entertain this anger in my life? A am I holding on to this because I enjoy it? Is withholding forgiveness about my ego? Uh, in the old days, we called that Sister Bertha better than you, you know, because Sister Bertha always had her nose up in the air. I don't sink to your level. 
I'm better. I am the perfect Christian. Well, as soon as you say that, you're not, first. But secondly, it is forgiving you means I'm lowering myself to your level. No, you're actually lifting yourself when you are willing to forgive what's not even been asked to be forgiven. What does it look like? You consider your life and say, is this where I want to stay? At some point in my life, I said, I do not want to hold on to a hurt that happened when I was a kid anymore. I'm not a kid. I'm an adult. Um, does, it, does it look like, you know what, if I continue, even in your workplace, if I continue on this pathway of anger, is it going to affect my career? Maybe. Is it going to affect my health? Quite probably. We all know that. We talked about that the very first week, that holding on to anger will destroy your health, your physical and your mental health and well-being. When you notice these angers, first again, name the word. I am big on naming stuff, but I think it's important. Name the injury. Name the hurt. You know, Kevin went back practicing as a PA this last weekend. He's been doing it, but he's back in a place in Rockford. Can you imagine somebody go into him and say, man, I hurt. Where's it hurt? No, your business. He's not going to be very helpful, and he's good. He's trained. He's educated. It's not going to be helpful. Well, is it here? None of your business. Is it down at this end? None of your business. Go find another doctor. <laughs> All right? So name the wound. Name the thing that triggers the wound. Name the thing that, when, what is it that's happening when I get mad about this all over again? What, what is it that occurred? Um, name the person to yourself. Just go ahead and say it out loud to yourself. I am angry at George because George did this to me. And when I say name it, name it to God. Father, I'm telling you, George did this. I've never been hurt so bad. And I'm so angry, God. Help me forgive this. Help me. And, and tell God what forgiveness will look for. And then prayerfully let it go. Now, I... I this is not a golden recipe for every time because sometimes you have to go through these steps a thousand times to get there. But if you're on those steps of a thousand times, at least you're on the way to better. You're on the way to healing. You're on the way to healthiness. You know, they say changing a habit takes 30 days, and really psychologists now say it takes 50 to 60 days to change a habit or more. Get on the pathway. Forgiveness. Shocked myself. Got through it. Sister uh, Lakenda said today, said, maybe this needs to be one of those sermons you preach once a year. Maybe it is. Maybe it is. I, I tend to not do that. Uh, those who see me work, I throw away all my old outlines. I never keep an outline because I don't ever want to just get in the habit of going back to something I've done. But there, there is one I keep, and we all know what that is, right? Uh, is water in the plan. I try and preach that every couple years. Uh, but then there's also, maybe we'll talk about forgiveness every year or so. Because as God said, I don't, how dare I ask for forgiveness from God when I refuse to grant it to my fellow servant, as in the reading. It was important enough Jesus told us that story. And that one is a story, it's a parable. He told us that story to remind us how important this was. Again, if you need help today with that, if there's something you'd like your brothers and sisters to lift up in prayer for you, we'd love to do that. If there's something you just need to sit in your pew and pray about right now, and you take that time. If you are not a child of God, you're nowhere near ready to forgive anybody else because you don't understand the glory and the greatness of being forgiven. So if you're ready to be a child of God and want, want to look at the Word, how to do that, we'd love to share that with you. Here's a secret. It's easy. It's easy to reach God because God stands right here waiting for you. I always feel that very personally when I do an invitation that I feel that God is standing right here saying, come on, if you need any help today, please come. While together we stand and while we sing.